Well, I've ironed it down and it actually worked. I am very pleased. It, it ironed this whole thing right down perfectly smooth. There's no wrinkles. There are, there are no bubbles. It is nice and flat. And that actually worked a heck of a lot better than I thought. This is the tight one here. This is the smallest, tightest, tight, smallest, tightest inside radius that I've got on any of these scallops. And this, as you can probably see, laid down really nice. So there are, this is all flat and smooth and well bonded. And I am very happy with that. So I'm going to repeat that procedure on the other side here. I'll go ahead and lay in my wet glue here and then wet glue down over top of this and bring this down as best that I can. Let it dry and then I'll come back and iron out the wrinkles and the bubbles. While I was uh, waiting for this to dry, I had gone ahead and finished up. This is the, the side that's been shrunk. The this, this side that I'm currently working on is on the bottom. But I went ahead and uh, put the fabric on the other side and trimmed it all off and did the uh, final gluing. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the trailing edge over there that I was just showing you. And while that's drying, I'm going to come back and do the uh, preliminary shrink on the side that I just put on and then I'll go ahead and do the final shrink on both sides. Then I'll go back over there and iron down that trailing edge and just kind of go back and forth between multiple pieces, which is something I highly recommend you do. Once you get your first piece made and you're done uh, with learning how to do the, the various processes and methods, I um, recommend you, you try to get uh, multiple pieces going at one time because while you're waiting for one to dry you can go ahead and and work on the other piece and while the other piece is drying you can come back and work on this other one and you can kind of go back and forth between pieces and it, it just keeps the whole process moving along. Alright, I know it doesn't look like the prettiest thing on the planet because of the, the glue and the slop everywhere but uh, everything is smooth and flat and uh, very uniform. You can see that the, uh, the spacing, the, the distance here, this width of this tape is consistent all the way down. So of course once it's painted and it's all a uniform color it should look really nice. Alright, let me get started on this other side and do some more gluing and shrinking and forming and then uh, I can start rib stitching that, um, that other elevator. I believe I'm well enough along with making these pieces that I can go back and pretty much document the entire process that I used to get a, uh, a tailpiece covered, um, stitched and shrunk and all that good stuff. So I'm going to start with this elevator here and kind of go through the entire process from start to finish. So this is, I believe this is the left elevator and you can see that I've got it already pre-glued. This initial pre-glue that you put on the fresh wood, uh, you do not wipe off. You just wipe the glue on and let it dry. I come back with a wet rag and I wipe down the areas that I do not want the glue. The way that I'm doing it, I only want the glue on this face here. I don't want any glue up here or any glue down here just on the face itself so I've already done that and uh, this is dry this has actually been sitting um, this set overnight so it's more than dry I've got the fabric already pre-cut larger than I needed obviously I've got the slit cut in it for the horn and now what I'm going to do is lay this on top of the elevator and I'm going to start tacking it with the iron and um, and getting it tacked in place and, and trim it and, and that kind of stuff. So let me do that. Let me get let me get started on getting that fabric tacked into place and then I'll continue on. Okay, so I've got the fabric on and I've got it tacked around the perimeter. 
using the iron set at about 250, roughly the, uh, the initial shrink temperature setting. I just went around and tacked this down into the glue using the iron around the perimeter. You can see I still got uh, things to trim off. I did that around the whole perimeter, working it a little at a time, cutting off the excess so I can make these corners. Now keep in mind that this is just an initial glue here. Um, once I get this trimmed up, then we do the final gluing, which will uh, go through the fabric and attach to the glue that's underneath. So you get full penetration through the fabric with the final glue, which we'll do here in a minute. <clears throat> Here's the uh, um, scalp trailing edges. I found that it's helpful in the, the deepest part of the, of the scallop, roughly the center of the scallop. It, it helps to slit the fabric because the fabric tries to pull between the high spots. So if you slit it in the low spot, it makes it a little bit easier to get it around. So it's tacked around the perimeter. I'm now going to go back and trim off all the excess and uh, it will be time to do the final glue and then do the initial shrink. Here's the elevator trimmed and I'm getting ready to put the uh, final gluing on it. I like to trim my pieces using a razor blade. I use one of these utility knife type of razor blades and it works really well with very minimal fraying and um, I use that pretty much exclusively to do all of my trimming of the fabric. Come around here to the uh, scallop trailing edge. Uh, the other thing that I like to use, I have these, um, these are scissors used for cutting hair. They're relatively small and they're very sharp. I like to use these to cut any of the little strands that frayed after doing the trimming with the razor blade. You want to make sure you get all of those little frayed ends cut and trimmed because believe it or not with this thin fabric, this is the uh, 1.7 ounce fabric, anything that gets underneath it will be visible through it and it has a little bit of an accumulating effect whereas if you you trim this off and you have some frayed ends and you don't do anything with them and they get underneath the final gluing and then you put your other piece of fabric over the top with your overlay and that has some fraying that will be visible on top of the other fraying and then when you put your trim tapes on if those are frayed it, it just kind of keeps building and depending on what you use for final paint some of that will probably show through so keep it clean and keep it trimmed and keep all the frays to uh, an absolute minimum so now I'm going to do the final gluing. I just come back uh, with a brush and put glue on all of these surfaces. And then while it's still wet, wipe it with a rag that pushes the glue through the fabric into the underlying substructure and the underlying glue. And uh, by wiping it, you keep the glue excess to a minimum. The glue dries really quick and if you leave it wet, that wet lip, that, that heavier wet thick glue will actually show through the fabric and possibly through your final paint depending on what kind of paint you use. So get it good and wet, wipe it, and uh, do that final gluing and then it will be time to do the initial shrink on this side and then we get to repeat the process on the other side. There's the initial shrink on the first side of this elevator. This is roughly a uh, 250 degree shrink. It's um, fairly tight. I mean it's not it's not too tight, not by a long shot, because um, there's nothing there's no fabric on the other side so you don't want to uh, you don't want to shrink this all the way because it may distort the piece but um, you want to make sure that you shrink it enough just to get the, uh, the fabric slightly snug and get the wrinkles and everything out of it so that first shrink is finished and uh, I can now flip it over and start on the second side with a new piece of fabric. Alright so we're getting ready to do the second side of this elevator and just like the first side you have to pre-glue around the perimeter 
and this is just like the first time around this pre-glue you just wipe it on and leave it you don't wipe it off you just put it on because it's the base it's the base coat of glue for the fabric to stick to and again I use a wet rag just to wipe off the areas that I don't want the glue to be um, I don't want any glue on this top surface because when when you shrink the fabric you don't want the fabric to be glued on to here you want it to be glued on this edge and then when it shrinks it will pull tight from that very edge on across you won't have this flat spot in here and then it it transitions up to the bigger pieces you want that to be a nice flowing transition so make sure that you wipe the glue off of everywhere except for the very faces of the perimeter. So I've done that, I've got this pre-glued, and since I'm working multiple pieces, this can sit now and dry, and I'll go on and work on some other parts, but this is the initial glue for the second side. I've already got the fabric cut for this side, and I've already got it slit for the horn, so this is, once this dries, I'll be ready to, to throw the fabric on it and start the uh, the attaching around the perimeter. This is side number two with the fabric finally um, glued around the perimeter using the iron, the small iron again set at the initial shrink temperature roughly 250 degrees and uh, I got this glued around the perimeter using that iron and you can see that it has not been shrunk yet but before we do that again we have to go back and we have to do a final glue on this perimeter yet again for this side of the fabric so I have to come back through here with, uh, with the glue put the glue on wet and wipe it while it's still wet and again the wiping pushes the glue down through the fabric into the glue that's underneath it making sure to wipe off all of the excess because any of those hard glossy wet glue lines will show through so you want to make sure you get all that wiped off clean so I'll do that next I'll put the final glue around this perimeter and then we can go ahead and shrink this side down um, it, doing the initial shrink on this side and then at that point we can continue on and do the final shrink on both sides and then this will be ready for rib stitching. So here's elevator number two with its uh, covering final shrunk to the uh, roughly the 350 degree heat setting it's nice and tight now this is the final shrink and um, you can see all the wrinkles have been ironed out and it's, it's um, it lays really nice nice and smooth and it's nice and tight and firm so the next thing to do then is to uh, start the rib stitching process first thing I did was put down these um, these are I keep on the call these are reinforcing tapes these go down on top of the fabric. This just helps prevent the, the stitching cord from tearing into the fabric more than you need to and it protects the, if the fabric underneath across here from the stitching cord uh, digging into it and it also alleviates some sharp corners as it wraps around the cap strip underneath. So you put your, um, your half inch reinforcing tape right on top of the ribs. You can see the rib showing through here. These, these lay right on top of the, on the ribs. Both sides, this side and the underside here as well. One thing that I wanted to mention was when you do the final shrink, you want to even out the heat. You don't want to final shrink this section here uh, entirely and then do this section you want to move around you may want to do you know this little corner on this side and then don't forget flip it over and do a, a section on the other side you have to keep flipping it back and forth and moving the heat around so that you don't warp the panel <clears throat> so you don't warp the panel so do put a little bit of heat on it flip it over put a little bit of heat on it somewhere else flip it back keep going back and forth 
once you get it all pretty well tight then you can go over one whole side and make sure that you got all of it tight and then flip it over and do the other side so move it around keep it uniform and uh, keep it from warping so now I've got these tapes on both sides I'm going to uh, measure and mark the locations for the stitching cord holes and then I'll go ahead and punch those holes and then I'll start the uh, the rib lacing all right the rib stitching is complete I've got this entire elevator stitched and now the next step is to start the finishing tapes or what are sometimes called surface tapes the first thing to do would be to uh, wet this down with the glue since this is such a short length I go ahead and I wet this whole length down and then I lay on my tape right into the wet glue and then come back and brush over the tape with wet glue and then wipe the entire thing down uh, with a dry rag and again that is just to make sure that the glue penetrates the tape and this fabric here to give you a good strong bond so wet this out lay in your tape wet it through wipe it dry and uh, that will be it for the uh, for the tapes over the stitches so let me start that and uh, continue on moving on with the elevator I'm now getting ready to put this piece of finishing tape on the scale of trailing edge what I have done um, I take the finishing tape and I fold it in half lengthwise and I run it down along a sharp edge like the end of this table here to crease it down the center and then I a little bit at a time I'll center that crease on the center of the trailing edge and I'll just lightly tack it with my iron so I'll, I'll center it and I'll tack it and I'll move down center it tack it move down center it tack it and I do that the whole length once I've done that and then I come back with the iron and I'll run it along the top here to make sure that this doesn't move to hold this in place while I'll do that why while I do that if I can only speak correctly I hold the loose ends down out of the way and then I put my iron on and then I'll move down a little bit and put the iron on and I'll do that holding these down and running the iron across this edge for the entire length just to make sure that the fabric doesn't move this is this is on pretty good here so that it won't move now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with my glue I'm going to put an, a nice wet coat of glue underneath and then I'll come back immediately and put a nice wet coat of glue right on top and glue through the fabric right down onto the elevator and I'll do this entire side first and then I'll wipe it going a little bit at a time do a small section and wipe it and then do a small section and wipe it do this entire side first and then come around to the other side and do the same procedure do a section wipe it a section wipe it and do this entire side and of course uh, just by doing that it doesn't get all the wrinkles and creases out of the fabric but it does hold it down into place I'll come back with the iron after the glues dry and shrink this and it will pull all those wrinkles and creases right out of it so let me get to gluing and then I'll come back and uh, we'll do some ironing and here we are after the shrink and you can see hopefully that there are no creases or bubbles or or anything of that nature it doesn't look anything like it had when I had first glued it down when it was a little wrinkly and, and bubbly and creased and whatnot so um, it's probably a little hard to tell but with the uh, the varying colors of the trim on the trim from the glue it may look a little bumpy and rough but it's not like these areas here these may look like they're bubbly but they're not they're perfectly smooth it's just the way that the glue had dried underneath the fabric a little bit but um, 
So that's that. That is how I have chosen to do the scallops. Uh, one thing that I probably could have done differently. Uh, another technique is you put the glue up here and um, let it dry and then you put your tape on and then you put it down with the iron. You heat it through with the iron just on the top here to keep it from moving. And then while these side pieces are still loose, you can shrink them first and then glue them. And that may actually work better. I don't know. I haven't tried it that way. Um, I've just been doing it the way that I had done the uh, the rudder initially. That's I I had done it with gluing it first and then shrinking it. But you can shrink first and then glue. And I'm not really sure which way is better. I just know that this way that I've been doing it works for me. So, all right. So I'm going to flip this over and start doing the trim on the hinge side of the elevator next.